Today we're going to look at a 1948 number 350 Royal Blue, the third variation, that Eric sent me because it didn't work. And figure out, using some simple diagnostics, why it didn't want to run. And there'll be some other special things coming up today on Austin's American Flyer YouTube page. Stick around. Eric's Royal Blue American Flyer. This engine came to him around Christmas in the 1950s and it was uh, purchased new and uh, in the next few years uh, his grandparents bought him the additional cars that you see, the uh, dump car, the red dump car, 718, uh, the searchlight car, and uh, the tank car, those were additional gifts. And these were all purchased from a hobby store in Philadelphia. And the hobby store was on 60, 69th Street called Todd's Model Shop. And uh, this train set has been all over the country, to Florida, to California, to Virginia, and now Florida. So uh, it, has, uh, it has gotten a lot of miles in. All right, I promised that I would give you all a shortcut when diagnosing an engine that does not want to run, and so I want to get to that. But also want to just mention some disclaimers. That is, there are many steps involved that I'm not really showing. There's a lot of details involved. I'm not covering that today. There's other videos that I've done that in. There will be more in the future. But for the purposes of this video, I just kind of want to get to the point. So if you put an engine on the track, you see the headlight light up, you do not hear humming from the motor, then that tells you a couple things. First of all, it's awesome because your light bulb works. <laughs> it's not burned out. But uh, in line with that, it means your solder joints and connectivity are all good. And those can also sometimes be very problematic when trying to find out why an engine won't run because there are different uh, connectivity points between the wheels and the motor. And, uh, and so if all of a sudden one or many of those are not, not in good shape, then your motor won't run. So if you see the headlight on and you don't hear the motor humming, 
The next thing you want to do is get to the E unit or reversing unit. It could be in the tender, it could be in the boiler on top of the motor chassis, which in this case that was, if there's a reversing lever on top of the engine shell, then your reverse unit is, is inside the boiler. So as you see, I did that here and now I'm reconnecting power. I'm gonna double check. Yes, I still have connectivity to the light bulb. The next thing you wanna do is take a small metal device like a screwdriver, jeweler screwdriver, and you wanna gently push on the metal fingers that are uh, side the drum on the reverse unit. There are two down low in front and there are two on top. Gently push on these, make sure you're not shorting across the two because that will cause problems. And by doing this, just see if you get the engine to move at all, the motor to move at all. Um, oftentimes these are points of wear and over time they will get worn out. And it's not uncommon to find these fingers with holes worn through them. And you might imagine if you have a hole worn through a point of contact, you're not going to get electric traveling through it very well. The other thing that happens is if you have an engine that sat for very long, uh, you can have oxidation happen. In the case of this particular engine, the fingers were very oxidized, the barrel was very oxidized, and the fingers had holes worn in them. Uh, two of them had holes worn completely through, and two others were worn almost completely through. So the solution is, in a case like this, is to replace them. I have heard of people repairing those holes by using solder, but to me that seems like a, a kind of a band-aid. So when replacing fingers on a reverse unit, you have to twist these small metal tabs um, to release the, uh, the fingers from their locations, and you need to be very careful when doing this. Those uh, metal tabs can snap off, and if they do, you're, you're in a world of hurt. Um, the other thing is, when you go to reassemble the new fingers, you want to make sure that those metal tabs are straightened out. Take your time, be patient, and it, those tabs should be in such a position that when you go to slide the new fingers on, they'll just very easily, almost completely effortlessly pop on. Lastly, you'll want to adjust the little copper fingers because during shipping and whatnot, those fingers get flattened out. And so once you have an idea of the travel distance between where the fingers are positioned and the barrel, you'll want to bend those so that they're gently touching the barrel uh, with a little bit of pressure, but not too much. So uh, once you do that, um, you should find that, uh, that your problems are solved and the motor should run. Now, uh, what I'm not showing you here is I cleaned the barrel on the reversing unit and I took the motor apart and I cleaned it all up and lubricated everything. So there's many, many other steps that, are, that took place that I'm just not going to highlight in this particular video. But again, just to recap, if you have a motor and it doesn't want to run and the headlight comes on, I would strongly suggest you go directly for the reversing and not pass out. I hope that helps.